I've got a great um, guest for you guys today. It's a, 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 a mission that's really close to my heart. You guys know I love military dogs. You know, I'm a big supporter of the military, the police, and everything like that. Um, you ever ask yourself what happens to these dogs? What happens to military dogs after they retire or when they're no longer used? I've got a guy here. His name is Bob Bryant. He has an organization that he's head of called Mission Canine Rescue. And um, I don't even want to do any more introductions because I think um, our conversation is going to introduce you better than I ever could, Bob. Let's, uh, let's get down to brass tacks and talk about um, this very, very, very important work that your organization is doing. Very good. Let me correct one thing so I don't get uh, beaten <laughs> by my two female partners. Uh, while I am a good chief cook and bottle washer and responsible for our development, we've got a retired Army veterinary technician and another uh, lady, Kristen Maurer, our president. These women travel the country with our dogs, so they get the credit on that. I'm just the monkey behind the curtain that raises the money <laughs> and tries to keep everything running smoothly. Oh, okay, that's, good. That's his tech. So I'm, I'm I love it. It's, it's a woman organ a woman led organization. We know it works, God, though, right? God help us all. And you know what they like better than anything? What's Neutering that? dogs. Oh boy. <laughs> like, yeah. So you know, I call them the ball snatchers. <laughs> well, I hope At any rate, I that. digress. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So here's the thing, Bob, and this is always something I, wor I worry about and concern myself with. I've had a lot of legends in the military dog world on. I've had Kenny Licklider. I've had um, Steve Stoops. I've had uh, Shannon Krieger, the top, top of the top. And they're responsible for getting these dogs and putting them into service. Now, my concern is, and I heard about this when we, you know, we pulled out of Afghanistan a, a couple of years ago, what happens to these dogs when the military pulls out? I know the handlers get attached to these dogs, but what is the general policy of what happens to these dogs then? Well, a military working dog can have as many as five handlers during the dog's uh, working career. Uh, illness, loss of work drive, uh, what have you, uh, PTSD, uh, it, all, it all translates into having the dog dispositioned as excess. The military themselves decides which of the dog's handlers should be able to adopt the dog. And if the handler that's, you know, tagged for that can't because of uh, maybe young kids and you got a high drive patrol dog, you know, it's just not a good idea. So they'll, 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 they will work with, with the other handlers. But um, the, the, the dogs themselves, once, once they go through the retirement process, uh, the military uh, basically just hands them off uh, to the handler if the handler can afford it. Uh, we're starting to see some help from the military in getting dogs back from overseas. Obama signed a portion of the National Defense Authorization Act back in 2016. In that act included a, cl a clause that uh, military working dogs retired overseas were to be taken back to U.S. soil. And how they got around that was the military called FOBs, uh, United States Soil, quote unquote. And we paid full price for uh, commercial airline fares to get dogs home from every corner of the world back until 2022 when we started seeing some cooperation and the military at one point has flown three dogs to us from Japan on a rotator flight to Seattle. We still had to get them across the country, but it saved us $6,000 a dog. So, you know, thank you, U.S. government. Uh, hone, me in, hone me in a little bit more. I don't think I answered your complete question. I want to make sure that I address yeah. it. Well, okay. So, so my concern is the dogs retire. Right. So l yep. let's say John Smith has the dog and the dog is now eight years old or whatever. And the dog's about to retire. If he gets the dog, then what the military just hands the dog off to him. Yes. And then yes. you're out. You're not in the picture at this point. Right. Well, at the, most of the handlers, unless the dog is stateside, cannot afford the cost of transportation. And the military is not just arbitrarily sending that dog home. So when the dog gets dispositioned as excess, Handlers reach out to us. Uh, I think we've done 654 uh, reunions with MWDs and handlers so far. Wow. And they will say, hey, my dog's been disposed as excess. He's at, you know, wherever, Korea, Italy, Guam, Bahrain, you know, just wherever mm -hmm. they're at. We reach out to the kennel master. Uh, we find out the disposition of the military working dog. 
uh, we get all their health certificates, we get everything else, and then we will arrange the transport. But they are kind enough to, you know, at least take the dog to the commercial airline if they don't transport it themselves. And then we will receive the dog. And in many cases, when the dog gets here, uh, we will ha- we'll have the handler meet us wherever the dog's coming in, and then they go back together. But okay, so I'm still not getting the part. You said Obama signed something in 2016 or yeah, whatever yes. it was. W- explain that to me again, because that didn't make sense. You okay. said that they will Mil- bring the dogs over. Mil- Mil- it was in the National Defense Authorization Act revision of 2016. Mm-hmm. It was in writing that military working dogs retired outside of the continental United States be returned to their last duty station. The military got around that by oh. calling for an operating basis United States soil. And now that's where it sat until we brought heat after heat after heat. And now we're finally getting some cooperation. So, the, so this is kind of bullshit because, I mean, you know, uh, and I'm a big fan of the military and pro-military. But so we're getting these dogs. They're paying good money for these dogs. They're transporting these dogs to a foreign, uh, an FOB, right? Uh, and they're then used in military service. And then when they're retired, all they're saying is, we're, we're just going to get them back to the, the base. We're not going to necessarily bring them back to the U.S. soil, but they're considering FOBs to be U.S. soil. Yes. At the time, they were. I don't know mm-hmm. if they still consider it that way or not, but that's mm-hmm. how they dodged the yeah. the act at that point. Mm-hmm. And, wow. of course, when a dog is retired, the government gives them nothing. They may give them the, somebody's uh, promoting a little award for military dogs. Great. Let's give them a little medal. Why not instead, let's give those dogs lifetime veterinary care, whoever they're with. They've earned yep. it and it's a drop in the bucket considering yep. the money we're wasting on, on different things. Yes. And for, for your information, a bill was introduced in 2019. It's called the Canine uh, Hero Healthcare Act. It failed to get through Congress. We're working now with another congressman on a 2024 revision of that, which looks like it has a good shot at passing. And what that will do is let nonprofit organizations like Mission Canine that spend 75% or more of donated funds on the actual work, not on mm-hmm. advertising or any kind of crap like that. The mm-hmm. dogs actually get the money. Uh, they're making almost a million dollars a year available. If this passes, and we will administrate that to our group of handlers that has their dogs. So it will be a blessing for them not to have to bear the cost of care because so many military dogs uh, show up with cancer from the compounds they've detected, how their kennels were cleaned, and they train like athletes all their lives. So while they're not necessarily broken, they're not 100%, and they need more than the average handler has the money to pay for. You know, that's something we never ever think about here these dogs get retired okay it's great you get the dog but yeah these dogs have been put through it they've served our country they've defended our country and protected our boys and and girls overseas and they don't even get veterinary care i mean that's crazy nothing nothing they they get excellent care while they're in service once they're out they're they're done yeah that's not that's not cool at all you know, I'm mean, keep me posted on that because I'm really interested well, in that. If I can help with that, that's something I, I would, can send, I would totally get I can, behind. I can send you the actual language that's going into the bill to let you have a look at. Well, let me know what I can do to make that happen. If I can promote it okay. or anything like that, or, or uh, press some people. I ask, I ask that people just tell their supporters, "Hey, these dogs served. They deserve health care for life." Considering yep. what the United States government wastes money on crap. Mm-hmm. They can afford a little bit of money for the dogs. Yeah, I agree a thousand percent. This is something important. Our soldiers are important, and our these dogs are soldiers. These are you know they're they're military personnel. They need to be treated with the dignity that we should be treating our personnel with as well. The reason, one reason why they wouldn't bring them home for the first few years after that uh, National Defense Act uh, mm-hmm. addendum was passed is that dogs, when retired, were considered non-military assets, and they could not take military transport because of that. Mm -hmm. That was another way they got around it. So once they're dispatched, they're no longer military assets? Correct. Once they're dispositioned as excess, and again, Mm -hmm. equipment, not soldier assets. Understood. Equipment assets, they Mm -hmm. can no longer be eligible for military transport. But we have seen, again, some leverage and leeway in that recently. And we're hoping it continues. Saves us money. 
We'll yep. still have to get the dog wherever, but uh, we save a huge expense. So now there's two different kinds of dogs in the military. There's the contracted dogs, right? And then there is the military dogs, right? There's the dogs that are there's, contracted out, and then there's the dogs that are actually belong to the service, the, the, the Army or the Navy or whatever. Co- correct. A couple of different uh, clarifications there. You also have a level of dog that are called MARSOC dogs. They are the special forces trained dogs that go in with our elite tacticians and do the raids, get Osama bin Laden, you know, whoever. Uh, normal military working dogs are trained at the Lackland Joint yeah. Task Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. And then they go to the branches of service that need them from there. Uh, contract working dogs serve a variety of places. However, many are attached to the military, and the military stated proudly that all military working dogs were evacuated from Bagram Air Force Base a couple of years ago. Yep. Well, they they were, but there's a bunch of Canadian working dogs that were attached to the United States military that were left there, and wow. we're starting to get uh, the Taliban took them, and we have a rescuer that's in. Um, Afghanistan, and she is, I won't say she befriended the Taliban, but when the dogs are not of <laughs> yeah. service to them anymore, uh, they give them to her. And we've managed to fly six or seven of them out in the last year. It, I, it can't tell you how much it infuriates me to think that the Taliban has our elite working dogs. They there. do. I, I, I can't tell you that. I, I, I can't think of a statement that's made me as upset in the last week as what you just said. Well, it's unfortunately very true. I hate it. Yeah, that's complete nonsense. Um, so, w- what age are the dogs usually um, dispositioned? Like, what, what? I noticed there can be things like they can be injured and stuff like that. But is yeah. there a certain age where they just go around nine years old? It's mm-hmm. when they start to lose their work drive, or as you mentioned, injury, or maybe they develop some sort of PTSD tick that makes them unsuitable or unpredictable. You know, they might come up leash after the handler. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you know, they just call it. How many of those dogs that you see that are dispositioned from duty um, can be placed in a, an average home, not a, not necessarily a sat, like a dog savvy trainer home, but you know, home where somebody's pretty competent with a dog. About 50% of them. Okay. And now you're talking a good number. You're talking more about the, like the, 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 just the plain military dogs, not necessarily the, the combat assault dogs or the special. No, I'm not talking, so-called for instance, dogs. I, for instance, I have a retired PDK nine, a German shepherd mm-hmm. named Navy. He served up in Canada. He's a bike trained drug dog. He is extremely mm-hmm. protective and I have to keep my head on the swivel with him. So just not anyone can adopt a dog like that. But mm-hmm. I would say half of, half of our dogs are not reactive a few of them are just big couch cushions but uh, Mm -hmm. they still like stimulation they still like to go and play and do their thing i mean a lot of them aren't assault dogs a lot of them have other like they're patrol most most of them aren't we we try not to take in too many bike trained dogs in most of the cases if it's a military working dog it's going to the handler and the handler knows how to handle it no Mm -hmm. problem Mm-hmm. With contract working dogs, they don't normally have designated handlers, but they're not normally bike trained. It's mm-hmm. the police canines that we worry about. And I really wish the police departments in the United States would take a uh, better uh, scope of what happens to their dogs when they retire. It's like, oh, handler can't take this dog. We're going to put him down if you can't take him. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, we, we can't take in dogs to the point that we can't adopt them out if they're yep. bike trained, aggressive it's a it, it's a real losing proposition, and I wish they'd make better plans for what happens to their dogs when they retire. So now we're talking about a whole different topic there, and we're talking police. about actually police dogs now, right? And some you're yes. saying some departments, and I've I've talked about this with a friend of mine. I'm not going to mention his name because he's very tied in with the police. Um, he said some departments just have really crappy policies where when the dogs no, no longer serve, mo- you would say most really. I very uh, while the police uh, canine handlers love their dogs, mm-hmm. their departments are not as kind. You know, we've seen just recently dogs ripped away from their partners, uh, yep. ma- massive public upheaval over the, the incidents. Uh, mm-hmm. I see police departments say, well, you know, if you can't take this dog, we'll just put him down. Mm-hmm. And, you know, say, oh, well, you know, I sure hate to hear that you're going to do that because you're the one that got the dog and trained it. You should provide 
some kind of retirement. Now, yeah. there is a hospice for aggressive dogs, but they stay full most of the time in Mount Pleasant, Texas. Yeah. Uh, former United States Navy female uh, working dog handler, Crystal Tronville, runs the Damien Project. Yeah. She takes in the worst of the worst, the biggest and the baddest, and she finds a way to keep them all calm and collect, and she, haven't, uh, she hadn't been bitten yet. She's a hero. Pretty good track record. She's something yeah. else. Yes. Pretty good track record. She's something else. But, but when you're saying hospice, like you're not talking about hospice, like hospice where they're just dying. You're saying hospice where well, they just stay there, well, like re- a sanctuary? Retirement, retirement and, uh, yes, a sanctuary and a hospice. Some of these dogs come with cancer. And in mm-hmm. this case, it is a hospice because there's, uh, you know, it, they're cancers that chemo's not going to take care of. I mean, she mm-hmm. takes these dogs on bucket list trips sure. to do oh, things wow. with them. Wow. It's pretty cool the amount of love and care that she yeah. gives these dogs. But some of them yeah. are just there to live out their lives because they're cranky old bastards that don't like anybody. <laughs> and it would be a, and it would be a risk to the public. Sure, sure. So, so of the percentage of dogs that Mission Canine rescues and takes in, you besides reuniting dogs, do you also have a program where you foster the dogs or keep the dogs or board the dogs until they can be placed as well. Yes, we, we have a working veteran canine ranch in Magnolia, Texas, just north of Houston. Mm-hmm. We have capacity for about 45 dogs. I like to keep it around 35 because it just runs much smoother with mm-hmm. that. When we get contract working dogs in from overseas or stateside, wherever they come from, we evaluate them for at least a month. We look for their triggers. We see if they're food aggressive, crate aggressive, uh, fence aggressive. If they like other dogs, if they... Mm-hmm have any particular hatred of humans we have every color of the rainbow working for us Mm -hmm. and so we can find out i used to have a dog that would get very aggressive against anybody uh with darker skin it turned out it was patrol dog in uh, in kuwait and Mm -hmm. he would get a lot of arabs that would cause trouble wherever he didn't Mm -hmm. like dark-skinned people um we will uh we will test them with cats if we have a lucky cat to see if they want to go after the cat. <laughs> or uh, yeah, cat. Our t- test cats are few and far between. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, we also bring them in and out of our ranch house. They learn to live in a house. Uh, they have play yards all day. They get stimulation. They get any medical treatment they need. And then they're adopted to a member of the public that will be responsible for their needed senior medical care. And that has the time to devote to a highly uh, active working dog. And what do you look for in those people? Like somebody wants to, somebody contacts you and says, Hey, I'm interested in helping out. I want to take a retired military dog. What are your, like, how many, how many other, how many other pets have you got? That's question number one. You Mm -hmm. know, if you've got little fluffy flu flu chihuahua, that's going (laughs) to run up and try to bite the military dog. I can tell you how well that's going to end up real quick. Uh, if you're, if you're, if you're a home with a plethora of pets, it's probably not a good idea to adopt a working dog because most of them are very selective with other animals that they're friendly with. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that you can afford the cost of care. Uh, A lot of people want to adopt when a dog needs some, Oh, sorry, you know, we don't have the money to do that for you. Well, no, don't adopt one of our dogs. If you can't take care of it, we can't pay for medical for owned dogs. It just, it it would literally break us. We want to make sure predominantly that you have the time to spend with that dog, that you can walk that dog twice a day, maybe including some playtime on top of that. You're going to feed the dog a good food, not some crap you get at Walmart, Mm -hmm. and just give the dog the type of life that its service merits it have. Uh, That's awesome. That's an awesome, awesome thing. Now, how many dogs have you brought back? When did did Mission Canine start? I I was almost like, when did you start? That's going to get you in trouble. 2013. Okay, 2013. So we're looking at 10, 10 and a half years or so. And how many uh, we dogs? We brought home thirteen hundred, thirteen one thousand three hundred dogs in from e- wow. from from every corner of the world. We're talking all the United States, including Alaska, Hawaii, Germany, Italy, Guam, Kuwait, Afghanistan, mm-hmm. Iraq, Jordan, Qatar, UAE, Japan, Korea, Bahrain, Bosnia, Israel, oh. Colombia, England, Turkey, Canada, <laughs> Mexico, everywhere. Wow. wow, so that's almost a hundred dogs a year you're doing. Yes, sometimes that's more. Dogs. That's a lot and that's, of dogs. And that's not to mention other dogs that we touch with veterinary care. We've spent over $2 million in vet care in the last 10 years. Wow. And that's money. I think about half of that 
should have been paid by our federal government. I agree. But I digress. Yeah, 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 no, I agree. You know, the other thing the government could do, just an idea, is, you know, get a good company like a True Panion that I use for my dogs and just pay the insurance. Just give they don't them insurance. want it. They, they, they want to insure them because they're too old. Now, maybe the uh, government could step in and say, pss, pss, yeah. pss, hey, True yeah. Panion, you're going to do this. Yeah. And then that, that would be great. It'd be wonderful. You know, maybe work with the d- deductible. We're happy for them to have anything. Anything, yeah. I mean, because it's a huge thing. I mean, it's one thing to take the dog and to take the responsibility of owning that dog and stimulating that dog and keeping that dog, you know, happy, healthy, and everything. But it's a whole other thing to think about the care that you've got to give that dog. And now that's going to come out of your pocket. And I can tell you, with my dogs, two of our dogs, between two of our dogs, we've spent $100,000 in the last three years, you know, in veterans. Easy. And, uh, and I've, got insurance, I spent 20, God. yeah. I spent 20000 with no insurance on mm. nine-year-old military working dog Labrador Retriever Oreo who had a very rare anal gland cancer. Had mm. to have radiation treatments, $23,000. But it bought him two and a half more years of great quality of life. So yeah. I'd spend it, again, double okay. that if he was still around. You're like me. It doesn't matter. I'll sell, I'll sell whatever I have to make sure my dog's taken care of. That's um, true. I'm, I'm just really disappointed, and I mean, th- this really disappointment t- disappoints me in the police departments and the U.S. military that these dogs are so disposable. You know, and no wonder a lot of people, or, you know, animal rights people, which I, you know, try to distance myself from in a lot of ways. Um, but there's some points there that these dogs aren't really. And I got in arguments about it in Afghanistan when we pulled out of Afghanistan because I knew I talked to Stoops, and he said, "No, those dogs are, you know." We, we got our dogs out, but I didn't realize that the contractor dogs were still left there. That's not fair. They were left there. Yeah, they were left there. And a guy stayed there as long as he could, then he had to go, and then the Taliban came in, mm. took them. That is really the worst picture to think about, that our beautiful dogs who protected these soldiers then have to live with the scum. And when we get them back, they're a shadow of their former selves. Of they're course. underweight. They're mangy. They have yeah. uh, pests sometime. No good. Well, so, let, so let's look now at the, the police dogs in this country, because that's another part of your mission, right? So the dogs, because it wasn't there recently like a couple of things all over Facebook about some handler wanted the dog and then the police department wouldn't give it to him or something? There's, you... there's two or three. The dog was ready to retire, but then the mm-hmm. police chief decided that, oh, he wasn't going to let the dog retire. And this dog was bonded with the handler's family and his kids. And now the dog's in a kennel. And it was just a total shit show. One of the yeah. one of the chiefs did the right thing, let the dog go. Another one didn't, and the dog's still stuck. And there's still, you know, lots of hell being raised about it. They need, again, I, I will side neither with the police department or the handler. I will, uh, I will side with the agreement that was understood going into the situation that this dog belongs to the police department. Mm -hmm. You may handle it for however many years it may live with you, but it will remain the property of the police department. If you leave before the dog is retirement age, do you understand that? Yes, I do. In that case, sorry, you know, Mm -hmm. you sign the paper, but if not, and they go back and they renege on their word of giving up a dog, then I think that's uh, inconscionable. Unconscious. You're saying, there we go. You're saying that, agree, that agreement is signed between the handler and the police department? Oh, yeah. Most of the time, including the military, you know, they let mm-hmm. those soldiers know this is not your dog. Right. This no, is the United that. States government property. Same thing with, with the police department, unless mm-hmm. the handler brings the dog himself. Right. In many cases, handlers bring their own dog. And that's yeah. Well, cool. smaller police departments, I think, do that more. Yes. Correct. The bigger ones, they, they definitely. I know LAPD, LA Sheriff. You know, the bigger cities, Nashville. Those, they're yeah, all. We've taken we've taken dogs from San Diego PD. In fact, we got the famous dog that ate the guy that was swinging a golf club, breaking up the convenience store. That dog chowed down on that man, and we got him. <laughs> he 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 was quite an interesting dog I bet. when he retired. And uh, obviously, most dogs now are going to be German Shepherds and Malinois, right? Mostly Malinois. I would say uh, 70% Mal's, 20% Shepherds, 10% Labs, Springer Spaniels, and German Short-Haired Pointers, and Springer Spaniels. TSA uses German Short-Haired Pointers, Springer Spaniels, and Labs almost exclusively because they're not scary looking. Right. Well, TSA is normally just using detection dogs. It's a single-purpose dog. Correct. 
Yeah, Correct. Like but a lot of shepherds and mouths are also single purpose dogs that are not trained to bite. Uh, however, they don't use them because the public freaks out when a pointy-eared right. dog comes up on them. Right. <laughs> People don't like pointy-eared dogs much. Um, so when, when, how do you reach out? Like, how do you do your work? I'm sure you probably get a, a million phone calls, emails, requests, and stuff like that from everywhere. But do you ever, or when you first started, did you ever need to go out and procure these dogs? I like, can see where they were in trouble. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, well, the way this started, um, uh, I met my partners when they were involved in another nonprofit that was already reuniting military dogs with handlers but they were just getting into the contract working dog world. This was back in late 2010 mm -hmm. and they had an executive director. I, I came into them offering a business relationship. You know, they promoted what I did. I'd share mm -hmm. revenue with them. They liked it. I got along with them. I got to really enjoy the work that they did and they struggled for money. And I told them you guys need to advertise. And their executive director yeah. at the time said, I will never spend any money to advertise. Well, two months later, She's eating her words, having to go get a real job. Mm -hmm. And uh, they came back. My partners came back to me. They asked me to co-found the new organization with them. And, you know, that's where it all got started and came from. You know, it's a really important thing. I mean, I ran a nonprofit for over 10 years. And, um, I, and I sucked at raising money. I sucked at asking for money. <clears throat> and, I hate it. You know, <laughs> it, it, yeah, I mean, maybe you're better at it than me, but it's it's one of those things that, you know, and there's something in, you know, that, that um, it's a, in, the, in the Jewish Torah, I think it's the Torah, the Talmud, where the person who donates the money is entitled to the same amount of virtue as the person doing the work, you know, so if you oh. can't do the work and... You, Right. So if you can't do the work like, OK, oh, my God, I would love to do what what Bob's organization is doing. Like Mission Canaan is amazing. I love this, but I can't do it. Well, write a check, because if you write that check, you're enabling you to do the work. But without that, there, there is no mission. There's nothing working. They are, right? so, they are doing it in absentia and they're yeah. doing a wonderful thing when they support us. Yeah. Plus, you know, depending on their tax situation, it's 100 percent write off. There's no downside to it and right. we actually spend our money on our work we don't send letters to dead people to ask for money right. uh, in the mail a, a yeah. lot of organizations really waste donor funds and we try to be very scrupulous with what we do well let's be clear on that because you know i can tell you, you said 75 percent of your money goes to the program no no That's... no no no. i didn't say that no no oh, i didn't say that to the dog i said no i said no i didn't say that so 93 cent 93 cents out of every dollar of our work goes to the dogs. However, we may have to cut back a little bit because I get it mounted around 80, 85% because we financially struggled this year because we spent too much money yep. on our work. And everybody says, yep. oh, nonprofits, you know, your people are making too much money. You know, our president makes under $70,000 a year and she works 80, 80 hours a week. Give me yeah. a break. No, no. Uh, but to answer your okay, get, get me back on track. I went on a rant, but I have a no, I'll no. The percentage. The seventy-five yeah, percent. percent is the number that the government is going to require a nonprofit organization spend at a minimum on its mission in order to receive funds to disperse to retired military working dogs. Oh, oh okay. In other got words, it, okay. if you've got some tardy organization out there that's mm -hmm. uh, doing sixty percent and they're spending forty percent on marketing they're not going to get part of that money. They need to spend their money better. You can spend you. way too much, but you can mm -hmm. also not spend enough. I think that sweet spot is 75 or 80% because yeah, we've a, nearly yeah. gone out of business twice yep. because we're doing 93 cents out of the dollar. It just, it takes it's everything. Too much. Yeah, it's too much. It's I mean, because there are other organizations, there are operation expenses that you got to have. Look, let, let, let's be honest, big organizations, and I'm not going to mention their names because, and I would love to mention their names because I hate them. But you watch those sad sap TV commercials at night and you start sending it $29 a month or $19 a month, a penny of every dollar is going to the dogs. You know, that pisses me off because I ran an organization helping shelter dogs and I was putting a lot into the dogs. In fact, everything. That's why I went, I, I didn't want to do it anymore. I couldn't do it. But if you're saying, you know, 70 to 80 percent is your objective, 70 to 80 percent, it's, it's insane that that much of your funds are, are going to the dogs, but let's making it more interesting for the, for the viewer. What, what are your hard costs? Give me some ideas where, 
you need money to help okay. these dogs. Let's talk about that because that's important. All right. Transports home for working dogs abroad, whether military or contract, run anywhere between two and $8,000, depending on if they're coming from, say, Kuwait, it's about $2,000 a dog. If they're coming from Guam, it's six $6,000 a dog. Japan's wow. about $8,000 a dog these days. Wow. Uh, we have a new kennel facility we're wanting to build to replace uh, somewhat uh, more dated one that we built back in 2016. That's a $100,000 mm -hmm. expense. We have a $15,000 a week payroll expense for our kennel staff and the people that actually run the organization. About $2.2 .2 million a year mm. is, our, is our operating budget. And of that, 93% of that was going directly to the work. So we were funding everything else on 7%, and it just uh, sometimes it's not enough. Yeah, it's impossible. I mean, it's really impossible. I mean, it's such, it's such an important thing. So um, you also have the expense that if you bring a dog back, you have the boarding, temporary boarding to vet get care. reunited, vet care. Well, right? well, well they're, 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 they're boarded at our ranch. So, you know, mm -hmm. we have no boarding expense. Now, I will tell you this, there are occasions where, uh, well, back last year, uh, the summer of the pandemic, uh, 2022, uh, there was a, a rabies ban from all of the, let's just call mm -hmm. them hot countries I uh, over that. in the Middle East. And we had to fly these dogs to a neutral place where they would be in quarantine for a month, then get new health certificates, fly them in the United States. You know, that's wow. about you know, thirty dollars a day a dog, and it gets mm -hmm. expensive. Sure, sure, yeah, that's 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 really crazy. Tell me about like a, a couple of really interesting dogs that you that you got back, and just like you know, like a hero dog or a really a, a special case, like one that really tugs at the heartstrings. Well, the the real good hero dog is our uh, PD canine that came from the San Diego Police Department. In fact, you can find this on YouTube. There was a rather deranged gentleman that went into a 7-Eleven and started, let me shut this up here. This mm -hmm. is actually my partner. I'll tell her, I'll call her in a minute. Sorry about that. No worries. It's on do not disturb. But <laughs> anyway, uh, this guy was absolutely wrecking that store with a golf club. The officers were out there telling him they were going to let the dog go. He didn't believe them. They let the dog go. That dog was all over him. It was great. Uh, I'm sorry I don't delight in other people's suffering with that guy. just flat had it coming. <laughs> uh, we, we have another dog named uh, Contract Working Dog, Oliver. Oliver's a very interesting dog. Oliver's what I call a fruit dog. Oliver fruit is trained dog. to detect fruit dog. Yes, he is an agricultural ah. citrus pest detection dog. He is trained to alert on diseased trees of a certain little teetsy fly or God knows what kind of fly, <laughs> medfly, medfly, that's right. it, in, in the orchards. And he will alert on a diseased tree and the orchard owner or whatever you call the orchard person removes the single tree rather than let the disease spread and kill the rest. Right. Um, one of the best military working dog reunions I had a chance to see was military working dog Attila. Uh, with his marine handler, J.D., hadn't seen each other in about five years. He went to up at Midway Airport in Chicago, and J.D. evidently saw Attila and Kristen before they saw him, and he made some little squeaky noise that only that dog would understand. That dog ripped away from Kristen, hauled ass over, and jumped on him. It was, it was very, very cool. Uh, all these dogs, uh, regardless yeah. of them, uh, they all remember their handlers. There's not yeah. a single one that didn't click after a few seconds, even if they were, you know, who the hell are you? I think I know who you are. Right. But, oh, yeah, yeah, you're, you're my friend. But it's got to be the most rewarding thing to, like, reunite a dog that was in service. And they, they I mean, because people who are in service, and I, I've never served. People always think I was in the military. I was never in the military. Um, these people who serve, like, th when they serve together, they go through battle together, there's an incredible bond for them with them. And it's got to be the yes. same bond with a dog. And I've talked with Stoops and Krieger and all these people. And it's like this incredible, incredible bond to see that brought back together. I mean, grown men crying. I mean, dogs. It's a beautiful thing. Out. Yeah. What a rewarding, rewarding thing. Um, do you ever get dog like the dogs? I'm sure there are some like what happens to the ones that are just they're just too bad to place like they're just, you know. Uh, we try not to take dogs that we cannot adopt out. We have a okay. couple of dogs now 
and they're going to be lifetime residents for That's us. We're just going to hang on. Yeah, we're going to hang on to them. You know, the kennel techs uh, have the dogs where they like them, and they exercise them. They have fun. They get all their vet care. So some of them are permanent residents, but we like to see most of them go to the public. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've had a we've had a dog or two that uh, we've had to euthanize due to cancers that were not going to get any better. It was the kindest thing to do. Yeah. It's the toughest thing to do, but it's the kindest thing to do in mm-hmm. many, many cases. And we had a few that, for whatever reason, their their uh, mental situation was not where it should be. They would try to attack anything and everything. Mm-hmm. And those dogs were euthanized for their safety and ours. Sure, sure. I and mean, people always make it out that, that you, you know, putting a dog down um, is a really bad thing. I mean, there are dogs that really, you know, for, for their to ease their suffering and to ease the, the danger to society. That's probably the best thing to do. To it's do it the in toughest a thing. We, it's, a, it's the toughest thing we have to do. It's the yeah. part of our work that I hate. I'm thankful that it only happens infrequently. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so you're saying most of the dogs that come to you are, let's say, over eight or nine years old. How long do they end up like living? I mean, it's such a sad question to ask, but like what, what's 12, this? 12, 12, to, 12 to 14 years, I would that say, long? on average. Yeah, I mean, my dogs passed at 14, 14, and one of them had a real bad type of blood cancer called a mangiosarcoma, mm-hmm. and she she was around 11 when she passed. Um, wow. And some dogs also are what we call washouts. They're, you know, they mm-hmm. don't pass training or they get retired early for some little medical condition that kicks them out. And, you know, you get a four or five-year-old dog that lived to be, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old with proper care. Now, if you feed them junk and you let them get fat, you know, they'll be right. dead by the time they're 10. But yep. uh, I've we would take a dog back from somebody if we saw them abusing the dog by overfeeding because we know mm-hmm. what happens to, to fat dogs. Same thing sure. that happened to fat boys. I used yep. to weigh 265 pounds. Wow. I'm, I, wouldn't be al- I wouldn't be alive now. Thank you, 14 years of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Changed Good my life, liter- yeah. literally. Uh, but no, it's 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 just not a good thing, and we make sure these dogs are taken good care of when people adopt. I, I like that because that I've never heard an organization say that. I mean, a solid breeder will take their dog back at any time. But I like the fact that you're keeping an eye on these dogs and you're seeing, okay, you know, this is this is an abuse by neglect, and those dogs we have an adoption be- con- we have an adoption contract that specifies what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. They sign it, we enforce it. And a lot of people in Canada would love to adopt our dogs, but we can't adopt to them because the government won't, you know, won't uh, recognize our contracts as legal in Canada. So, you know, wow. sorry. That's crazy. Wow, that's I, I had no idea. Semantics. Yes, Trudeau. I guess Trudeau doesn't like us. <laughs> well, we got a lot of viewers in Canada. Maybe people will, will put put some word out there. I hope. So. Um, I hope so because my dog Navy. He was adopted from, I mean, he, he served in Longay, Canada, a Quebec mm. little province city, a, a great dog. But they put down dogs when they don't have handlers up there that are by train and they don't transfer them. So, so, now, so that's a dog from Canada. That's not a U.S. military dog? No, that's, can, that's police canine Navy. I don't know if you can see him back here. Where's he at? Navy. Come here. Come here. Oh, there he is. See him back there. Oh, yeah. I can get him. <laughs> Some kind of, oh yeah, there, there he go. is. Oh, he's a pretty see, boy. He's a big boy. Yeah, see, he's <laughs> freaking lazy. <laughs> Laid his head back down. <laughs> yeah, he's like, you don't have there. anything for me. Screw you. I'm right, not gonna yeah. have anything to do with you. <laughs> that's a, so. But that's interesting that I didn't realize you t- you're t- taking some dogs too from another country's military or police work as well. Oh, we get them from all over the world. Uh, okay. If a, that they his handler got in some sort of trouble. I have no idea what it is. He's a nice guy. I don't know what happened, but for whatever reason, they didn't want the dog to go back to him because he was removed from the department. Mm -hmm. And uh, they wrote us because they were afraid that he'd be put down because that's their policy because Mm -hmm. they can't just give them to another handler. Mm -hmm. And we didn't want to see that happen. I had an older dog, a Malinois at that time that was his days were numbered. And so we agreed. I flew to Vermont. They drove him across the border. Uh, we met him. We drove him six days back to Southern California. Wow. Wow. Been with me nearly four years now. Good dog. Crazy, yeah. crazy, but uh, good dog. Obviously, you don't recommend people to get two dogs from you, right? 
Uh, depends. Uh, we, in many cases, if they're both friendly and they like each other, and again, the adopter has the capacity to fund their care and their exercise. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Okay. We have no problem with that. Okay. So, so there's we, two we, different, two different ways people can help, right? I mean, and again, let's let's look at the greater picture of the mission, which is, we can either help by adopting a dog through you, filling out the paperwork, mm-hmm. any anywhere in the states, right? I mean, they could. Correct. Adopted, they could be anyone in the United States. Fill out an application online. I'll, I'll put the uh, link in the description. Um, and, and we maybe, will transport that dog anywhere. If they, if somebody's in California and they want to adopt a dog and they passed our muster and they don't want to, you know, come and choose, mm-hmm. uh, you know, which of the dogs are matched with, we'll transport one. We ask for some remuneration for bringing the dog all the way wherever, but you know, it's on a strictly what they're able to afford basis. Right. And, and the other thing, too, is they can make a donation, which can go towards the care. Do you have a thing where they can sponsor a dog? Like if there's a dog living in yes, you know, like one we of have, forever dogs? Well, they're not necessarily our forever dogs, quote unquote, but we have uh, we post what we call the dog of the week. And if they want to donate to the dog of the week, that that goes toward the dog's care, keeping, you know, well-being, what have you, for the time they're with us at the ranch. Wow. Okay. Well, I mean, it's, I, I, I love this organization. I mean, I just, I, I had no idea that you existed. You know, I mean, you, you, I got an email about you. Somebody told me about you and I thought, wow, like this is something I can really get behind because the military dogs are so integral to our country, to our police and everything that without them, you know, a lot of soldiers and a lot of police officers would die, you know, and a lot of a lot of um, innocent people or even guilty people would be hurt much more seriously than they are with a dog. This is true. Very true. Uh, no, I'm glad so you found us. Even though we've been around 10 years still, not everybody knows who we are, and we'd really like to branch out. Uh, we're at a point where we need to grow. We've gotten, yeah. uh, we've gotten large enough that we don't want to cut our work back, but we've got to get some reserves so we don't have financial crises twice a year, and I have to send out the begging email and, you know, Mm -hmm. help us out. Everybody wants to bring a dog home, but where the disconnect is once the dog gets home and the dog needs medical care, sometimes you get crickets when you ask for veterinary funding. And so that's where, that's where our money disappears in this bottomless pit. Getting the dogs home is the easy part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's the that's the the Hollywood ending, right? I mean, you know, here comes the dog. Here's opening the crate. Here's the person reuniting. But then there are because the the people who, especially, I want to I want to stress this part. If I'm in, you know, somebody who served in the military, and then that's the person getting the dog, we don't pay our military enough, you know, or or, you know, police departments enough. And then they're they've got this dog, and they really do want to do what's best by it. You know, they deserve some help, and the fact that you are trying to help, you know, as much as you can. It'd be great. To, like I said, I would love to see the, the veterinary care covered for these dogs for life. I think we'll get the military working dog care cover pass this time. Contract working dogs, you know, not. That's However, yeah. I wish the, I wish that what I wish the government would do would to be, would to be enforce a contract that stated that the dogs will receive, you know, XXX transport home, you know, this quality food, or you can't send them wherever it is you want to send them. Yeah, That's what I'd like to see. That would place the burden of the cost of care on the contractor rather than the government, where it's just where it should be. Well, I mean, you know, if you think about it, the contractors work hand in hand with the government. I mean, and I'm not speaking for the contractors, but I, you know, I know people who have provided a lot of dogs for the military. It would be just as easy to say, hey, you need to cover this and this, and they could, you know, include that cost in the, in the sale price of the dog. Absolutely. You know, and that would not be a really, these are really simple solutions, by the way, that you're proposing for these dogs to say, okay, insurance, you know, at the very least they could work with somebody like, I mean, you know, I, I like True Patty and I've had him for years. Um, they could work with them and, and work some kind of deal. Okay. This is a special program. The government subsidizes it, whatever, you know, and mm-hmm. then you have these, this, these, this other position where they work with the contract working dogs and, um, and say, Hey, you need to at least cover the cost of the animals transport back and you know, that's a contract. Correct. And if you don't do that, then you lose your, it's easy. You just, you just lose your well, contract with the military. You can't do any more business with the military. Well, if you're not for instance, your I'll give, give you an example. We yeah. have six contract working dogs 
that were sorry five that have mm-hmm. served in Bosnia as mine detection dogs. Mm-hmm. They're retiring the dogs. They have no funds to send them back, so we're raising money to bring the dogs back. So mm-hmm. again, we're paying for somebody else's missed uh, task. But Bosnia, how long ago was that? People are driving me crazy. I'm sorry. <laughs> and this is all on do not disturb. So <laughs> these are supposedly important callers. God help me. <laughs> Bosnia, they've been there probably, oh, they're six, about six, seven years old. Uh, they use them in demining work uh, from all the I crap, cluster, cluster bombs, stuff like that. I remember that, but I'm surprised these dogs are still around. Oh, they're still around. There's new ones. I mean, there's no limit to how many munitions are buried over right. in that area. So who's so sending there, those dogs over there? Uh, some of our people from canine companies in the United States, there's several mm-hmm. different ones that send them there. Those are all contract this, this, dogs. Yes, correct. They're okay, not military. They're contract working dogs. Yeah. Well, again, I think if these dogs are contract dogs, they're still serving our military and there should still be some kind of stuff. And I mean, you know, get me the information. I'd love to push it out there that um, I'll do it. we need to do better by these dogs and, uh, and, and keep me posted on your, on your work. I love it. I mean, I'm a big fan now. I've just had knew, knew nothing about you. I looked at some of your stuff online, your website and, uh, and talking to you just really sells me on this idea that, you know, you know, cause it's always this thing and everybody's trying to raise money and you know, everybody needs to raise money, but this is something that's so important. And so many organizations, I'm again, not going to mention the names. You, you watch the sad commercial on TV and then you got to hear a nice, beautiful, sad song behind it. And you put your $20 check in the mail, your credit card and none of that money, none of that money, those big organizations with the fancy initials and the fancy logos do not, rescue shelter dogs they do not you're telling me that 70 to 90 percent of your money is going to your mission to helping these dogs get back here to vetting them to training them to boarding them to placing them to back to where they belong i mean it's a it's an idea i can get behind so i hope people we we've we've never been any less than 88 percent spent to mission until this point and because we're getting so large we have to do stupid things like get audits because for some reason, a nonprofit mm-hmm. uh, professional CPA, uh, you know, her preparing our taxes isn't good enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just there's always there's always emergencies that come up. So we've got to get some emergency funding now where there isn't any. And that's our big reserve. goal this first quarter. Yeah, we and got go- to and we don't. It- yeah, the, and the government will kill you because I had a friend of mine who ran a very, very, very good organization for 40 years. And he was doing, they were doing, uh, what do they call that? A forensic audit, for, you know, mm-hmm. every year. Yes. And they were spending thirty to $40,000 on a cheapest forensic we've audit. Been quoted, cheapest we've been quoted is $30,000. And it yep. just, if, if you were to give me $30,000 to help <laughs> our dogs and I spend it on an audit, would you be pissed? Of course, but it's the government because if you don't do it, then you lose your five hundred one c three. Yeah, we, and now we, it's not we, 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 No, actually, you don't. What you what you lo- what you lose, you don't have to have an audit. We have, you know, we haven't had an audit in ten years. We've been over, we've been we've required to f- file form nine ninety for the past right. nine years. We've never filed a postcard. Um, uh, yeah, no, nine ninety is what I filed uh, too. What what you will lose without the audit, and this is something we need to do, not only to get our rating up a little bit with some of these mm-hmm. supposedly the we're all to end all charity uh-huh. rating sites which are a bunch of crap i won't get into my okay. rant on that uh, but um okay bob where are we going with this um oh the the, the audits you will lose your yeah. ability to get in to be part of the combined federal campaign which oh, okay. is a huge government you know pool of yeah. of their employees that will give to you we really need to be involved in that we could get so much more and to do that requires that we spend probably thirty thousand dollars a year yeah. on yeah. an audit it's ridiculous but you, you're in the work you got to play the game yeah i guess maybe there's too many scammers out there and it's, it's I, I don't know the whole thing it's just, it just it bewilders me you know when you're really trying to do the work and you need the money to do the work and the more mm-hmm. money you get because it's an endless supply of Dogs that you could be helping, obviously. You know, I don't think if you had, it took a hundred. We are we're budget, only so. we are only limited by our financial resources. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing that's standing over our way of taking a thousand dogs mm-hmm. is resources, and they're all there. So some of these dogs are dying overseas, waiting for your organization or great organization to bring them here. They're dying alone. 
because All right. that's the fund that's factor. correct, and yet still no other organization has even come close to our numbers in the past ten years, and that's you're doing it. That's including dogs a year on the average. What yeah, you told me that's including right. that's including the big ones that you don't want to name. You know them. they haven't they haven't brought you know a couple of them have tried to get involved in doing military working dog reunions after they helped us fund one a couple yeah. you know about nine years ago, and so yeah. now they want to do it, and I, I just shake my head. Club. It's bullshit. Yeah, they, it's really bad. They 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 they, they copy your work. They just rip yep. off artists, but whatever. They see a way to gain money, and anyway, I'll shut up now. Well, listen. I mean, let's let's. I'm going to put a link up to your site. Um, I, I would encourage people to donate. You never heard of you know. Uh, you've never heard of the organization. You've never heard of Bob. You've never heard of Mission Canine Rescue. But here's the thing: the reason is because they're busy doing the work. Like you're you're really doing the work. You're not promoting it on tv and all this stuff and, and and getting all these donations and then you know then 90 percent of your funds goes to the tv commercial and the fancy you know canvas bag that people get which is all crap your money's going to help these dogs so i, I love it man i think it's awesome thank you very much for having me on i really appreciate it yeah well let's stay in touch i really really love what you're doing